Hey everyone, it's Matt with Tar Heel Digging. Down at the base of Harmonica Hill again today. You can see the start of the hill right up there. There's a little creek bed down here. I'm working this flat area. A lot of shotgun shells in here, but yes, that's uh, Hurricane Joaquin you can hear in the background there. It's moving the trees around quite a bit. But uh, I feel pretty safe back here. These are some pretty, pretty solid trees back here. Uh, I got a decent signal down here. It wasn't very deep, only three inches down. Had to chase it around a little bit. And it's a buckball. So we'll take that and keep on moving. Well, Hurricane Joaquin might be off the coast and it might be pretty windy to film, but I had to get out today. Cabin fever, fever was setting in, so I'm back out here in the woods. And I got a pretty high signal and it was real shallow. I didn't think much of it. I thought for sure it was going to be a can or something. Until I cleared away some dirt. And I haven't even dug a hole yet, gang. I've been poking around here a little bit with a pinpointer. And it went off right here. Look at that. Looking good to me. Let's pull that out and see what we've got. Quarter size object. And it's a Washington. Silver Washington. Oh, it's from the 30s. Alright, we'll be careful cleaning that one up. Very nice. We'll take it. Take it and run. I don't know if you can see him, but there's a big hawk right there. And there's a crow chasing him. He's sitting in this tree here. Can't really get a good look at him. Here comes the crow. And the chase is on. <laughs> Well, the ground is full of signals today, as I figured it would be. We had uh, probably over 10 inches of rain. In fact, yeah, measurable, just over 10 inches of rain in the area here because of uh, Hurricane Joaquin. Um, anyhow, got a decent signal here, rang in at 40, 41, and I just popped the plug out. I'm looking at what I think might be a pocket knife right here. Yeah. It looks pretty bent up though. It might be off of a pocket knife. Looks like the wood is long gone. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll keep poking around in here and see what we can come up with. Uh, a lot of iron in here. But we'll keep moving. Nice and slow. Okay, just peeling through the iron here and I got a signal about two inches down. Pretty solid, like a 50-51. And I just pulled this out. I don't know if you can see this or not. Looks like a lock plate to an old padlock. I think it says N and W on there. Really old though. Yeah, nothing on the back side. Just looks like it was part of a padlock faceplate. That ought to look nice cleaned up. We'll take it. Okay, I unplugged the headphones on the Fisher real quick, so I want you to hear how much iron is in the ground here, and how many different readings I'm getting. It's all iron, those low grunts. Just hoping for a high tone in here, or a mid-tone even, is nice. There's an overload, something large in the ground there. Now there's a mid-tone. See, I can kind of get that one to repeat a little bit, although it's jumping around. That's probably something I'm going to want to dig. Disappears pretty quick when I get the coil up. So that's what I'm listening for amongst all this iron. Just those one or two little blips of high tones and I'll come back over top of them. See if I can isolate them. It's noisy working through here. But I think I'm going to go after this mid-tone over here. See if I can pinpoint that and see what it is. Well, I got down to it. Look at this. <laughs> Little tiny horseshoe. 
I mean that thing is small. Still has some nails in it so it might have been thrown. <laughs> you just never know back here. Well here's one that was coming in real rough. It's down there about six or seven inches and I just pulled this out. It's a bent square nail with an iron buckle. Might be an older buckle. I'll have to take that one home and clean it up a little bit. I don't think there's any detail on it, but definitely older. All right, we'll see if there's anything else around here. Okay, I'm up on the side slope of Harmonica Hill here, right at the, the base down here is a little channel. And I'm kind of coming up this way and working in on some brush. I got a decent signal here, and I'll let you listen to it here. I got my headphones on, but let's see if you can hear this one. Ringing a solid 45, 46. And it's about three or four inches down. I just pinpointed it. Real solid signal. All right, let's go get it. Okay, I got the hole opened up and I'm getting a single. I'm getting a signal right down here. Let's see what we've got. Looks like a flat button. Sure enough, look at that. Well, there's an oldie. Nice flat button. Take that all day long. Nice big shank on it. All right. Well, here's another one I wanted to get on film. Right up next to this tree. A little bit bouncy. Settling in at about a 49, but I'm getting a lot of bounciness from it. Pretty deep. It's it uh, pinpointed at seven inches. There's the edge of it. I don't think it's real big. 47, 48, 45. It's a little more consistent now. All right, we'll give it a dig. All right, right up against that tree here. We're down to it. Let's see what we got. Still sounding good. Right there. Right there. And that, my friends, is a little Civil War bullet action. Nice. What is that, a cleaner? I can't quite see it. It's real short. I think it's a Williams cleaner. I've found two of them in here before. Well, we'll clean it up real careful, but how about that? We've got a little Civil War bingo. Loving it. Okay, we've got a real weak, kind of a nickel slash pull tab signal here, but I see something green. I don't think it's a uh, shotgun shell, just by the looking at it, but let's pull it out and see what we've got here. Yeah, it looks like a flat button. Definitely. Nice big one, too. Shank is broken off. That's an oldie. We'll take it. Yeah, dig flat buttons all day long. Well, here's what you get when you have 10 plus inches of rain in about three days. These mushrooms are popping up everywhere. Hey, let me show you a few pictures I've been taking. Okay, let's do a paper towel wrap up for the last couple of hunts here, gang. It was fun to get out there. Not so fun during uh, the hurricane. I did get a little rain on me, but uh, still, still a lot of fun to be out there hunting. Really, really enjoy hunting around Harmonica Hill. No doubt about that. Wanted you to take a look at this lock plate. I got it all cleaned up. Uh, this thing turned out really nice. I love all the green patina on this. Uh, N and W Railway stands for Norfolk and Western Railway. They went into existence back in 1839. Uh, the lock plate is fairly old. I think it's late 1800s would be my guess. And it, it's a it's kind of a rare uh, lock plate. This is an old uh, switch plate lock from uh, the railroad company, obviously. Uh, this particular lock I've seen sold in good working order with the key and everything for over $400 at auction. 
So this is just the lock plate, and obviously it's all banged up and bent up, but it's kind of nice to have a piece that will display so nicely. So I really like how that one cleaned up. And again, I cleaned that up using a toothpick method, very little water, and just using toothpicks to scrape off all the dirt. Uh, here's that quarter that turned out to be a 1932 first year Washington. 1932. Now if this were a D or an S mint mark, it'd be worth some serious money. Unfortunately, there's no mint mark on the back. But it's pretty clean for a 1932. Been in the ground a while, but uh, first 1932 I've recovered. And finally, finally found a, a more of a modern coin back there. Usually I don't find too many coins at all, but I think uh, with given the amount of shotgun shells I dug, I think someone was stumbling around in their pockets for a shotgun shell and that quarter spilled out. Here's that piece of uh, pocket knife. I tried bending it straight, but it started cracking on me, and I don't know what I'm going to do with that, but I thought I'd show it to you cleaned up anyway. little buck ball here. Here's that iron buckle. You can see that one. Quite a bit of uh, corrosion on that one. And the buttons. Really impressed when I started pulling flat buttons. Here's the first one. This is a brass flat button with the shank still firmly attached. Yeah, nothing on the, the face. Couldn't quite get a back mark off of it. I don't think there is one. And this other one that I dug is actually a little tomback. If you look closely, you'll see kind of a silver hue to it. That's definitely a tomback button. Now this one's going back probably into the late 1700s. So we really peeled back the history in this video. We found items from the 1700s like this. We found some old horseshoes. We found uh, some things from the 1800s. Some Civil War activity back there, obviously, and then the, the modern coin. But here's how the little cleaner bullet uh, cleaned up, again, using a toothpick. Great story behind these bullets, gang, if, if you're ever interested in learning a little more about Civil War history. This is a neat little bullet here. The Williams Company manufactured these for the federal government, and they sold the government not on the fact that it was a cleaner bullet that would help keep the barrels clean, but on the fact that it took less lead to manufacture this bullet than it did a three-ringer. I'm going to bring a three-ring bullet in here just for comparison. You can see there's a lot more lead being used in manufacturing it than this. And lead prices, I would imagine, were getting pretty high during the war, and the government bought it. So the Williams Company signed a contract and manufactured several million of these bullets for the troops. And once the troops started using them in the field, they decided that uh, it actually, when this zinc disc expanded, uh, it didn't just uh, attach to the rifling in the barrel, but it also helped clean the barrel and keep the barrel clean from getting fouled up. That was a real big issue back in the day when the black powder didn't burn so clean. So then after a while, they figured that uh, this disc started falling apart and then the bullets were not, uh, not very stable. Uh, and then the government learned after a while that uh, the the cost it took to manufacture this bullet because they had to add the zinc disc to the back of it the additional labor kind of offset the fact that it required less lead so kind of an interesting story I'll give you a little link in the description and you can read up on it but there's the the two bullets compared side by side a common three ringer and then this beautiful little Williams cleaner that I found and I believe this is the 17th or 18th bullet that I've pulled from Harmonica Hill uh, definitely a Union campsite there shortly after the war. So that was a fun hunt, gang. Thanks for coming along. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time. Take care, everyone. <laughs>